Hey booktube, welcome back. Today I'm here with another book haul and it's been about four months since the last time I posted a book haul uh, so I have quite a bit to cover here. I am still trying to limit my book buying a little bit so it's not too terrible but we're still talking about 14 books so I'm just gonna get get going here. I've broken these books down into four different categories just to make it a little bit easier to go through them. Uh, so the first category is books by Philippa Gregory, or specifically her Cousins War series. In the last book haul I did, I actually talked about buying the first three books in that series, but at the time I actually thought it was a trilogy. And someone made a comment on that video pointing out that it is not in fact a trilogy, there are several more books. Uh, so. That was great to learn, and thank you to that person who made that comment because I promptly went out in search of the next books. If you're not familiar with this series, um, it is a collection of historical fiction novels set during the time of the War of the Roses, otherwise known as the Cousins War, uh, which took place between the like mid-1400s and... or actually, it's in the 1400s. I think it's 1455 to 1485. I've been reading a lot of Wikipedia articles about this subject because I'm fascinated. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's, it's in that kind of range. Um, and the cool thing about these books is that each book follows um, the life and perspective of one woman in that time. Um, and Philippa Gregory is kind of known for doing a lot of research, and so the ends of the books tend to have um, a little blurb talking about the choices that she made, because I've, obviously she has to fictionalize quite a bit to create a novel length, because we don't know much about these people in real life. Um, and. Yeah, so it's, it makes for a really interesting story, and I don't personally know that much about this time period. Um, I've learned pretty much everything I know about it during the past few months, um, and so it's been really interesting to learn about it and to uh, read these fictionalized versions and then to also go off and read other articles and stuff to just like learn the facts, and it's been a really cool process. So uh, if you're interested in history, I really, I highly recommend these ones. Um, and there is a little bit of fantasy that's worked through some of the um, novels. There's like one family in particular that's supposed to have uh, this, their, their heritage goes or their lineage goes back to um, a water goddess so uh, it's it's said that the women in that family have some magical abilities so that's kind of played up a little bit in the stories and adds a fun um, little extra bit of fantasy anyway so the fourth book in this series is the Kingmaker's daughter and this follows the the perspective of Anne Neville of Warwick and her father the Earl of Warwick or Duke I've armed my Warwick. I just think of him as Warwick. Anyway, he's also known as the Kingmaker, and he was responsible for putting several of the kings um, during the Cousins' War. He put them on the throne. Um, so he got quite a reputation and a name for himself. And this is one of his daughters and her story um, and how it plays into the war. The fifth book in the series is The White Princess, and this one follows uh, the story of Elizabeth of York, and it gets really confusing, and this is one of my pet peeves with, like, this time period. Not This is not something I can attribute to the author, this is just what humans did. We named everyone the same, like, five names. So this Elizabeth is the daughter of another Elizabeth. And she also has her own daughter that she also names Elizabeth, so it gets very confusing. Um, but uh, the White Princess Elizabeth is the daughter of Elizabeth from the first book in the series, which is The White Queen. So you see. Anyway, this is actually my current read at the moment, so I'm uh, pretty close to, yeah, like two-thirds of the way through at the moment. Um, and then the sixth and final book in the Cousins War series is The King's Curse, and this one follows the story of Margaret Pole, I think is her last name, um, and Margaret is actually the cousin of this Elizabeth. So um, she is actually playing a more major role in this book, um, so it'll be really interesting to see her storyline um, and how things wrap up here. But as you can see, uh, the stories are all kind of interwoven between the books in the series, and that makes it um, 
more addicting of a series. I just want to keep reading and seeing uh, what has happened to these characters from earlier novels and where their storylines have gone. Um, part of this, it's a little bit, I think, more interesting for me because I don't know much about this time period. So that has been kind of a cool process just to learn a lot while I'm having these fun adventures. Um, so that's where I'm at with The Cousin's War. The next category of books I have is pre-orders. And the first book here is actually one that I have on Kindle, and that is Dark Age by Pierce Brown. And this is the seventh book in his Red Rising series, or the uh, second book in the second trilogy within that, which is Iron Gold. Um, Iron Gold came out last year, and it seems like this new trilogy within the storyline has taken a much darker, more adult kind of tone to it, where as um, the first series, uh, I've, I've heard it classified as YA. I definitely would not classify Iron Gold um, as YA. Um, and it sounds like, I have not read Dark Age yet, but Jess read Dark Age. Uh, it sounds like it has gotten even more buck wild. Like it has gotten dark and um, and it's not necessarily the kind of book that you want to read right before bed, but it's also at the same time the kind of addictive read that you can't put down even if it's right before bed. So um, I am postponing reading that one partly because it's giant. I think it was like 800 pages or something, um, but also it sounds kind of intense and I'm looking for a little bit more lighter reads at the moment, but I'm really excited to pick that one up whenever I I'm in the right mood for it. My next pre-order was the latest book by Joe Walton and this one is called Lint. I don't really know a whole lot about this one. Um, from what I've seen it's another historical fantasy novel and it's actually also set in the 1400s which I think will make it kind of a, a fun book to read after I finish up um, these Cousins War books. Uh, but this one has, I'm assuming, a bit more of a fantasy edge to it, just knowing Jill Walton and her books. Um, but it also deals a lot with humanism and the age of the Renaissance. So um, it sounds really interesting from those little bits that I picked up. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to go in blind and I think it's going to be a good time because I always love Jill Walton books. My next pre-order is from the YouTube sensation The Try Guys, and it is The Hidden Art of <laughs> Up. This seems like it's a bit of a vulnerable yet comedic self-help book um, that just follows all of the guys trying to do the things that they are historically not good at. And um, I've seen them do a few videos talking about this book and what's been going into it. Um, and I've really been enjoying their videos over the past few months. So when I saw this coming up, I just went ahead and pre-ordered and I'm pretty excited to dive in one day. I think it's going to be fun. And my final pre-order book is the second installment of the Adventure Zone graphic novel series. Um, this one is Murder on the Rockport Limited. If you're not familiar with the Adventure Zone, it's an amazing podcast by the McElroy brothers who are just like some of my favorite humans in the world. Um, I listen to most of their podcasts. I just love them all. Um, I would listen to all of them if I had the time. But uh, The Adventure Zone was a podcast that um, followed their um, D and D campaigns. So it was the brothers. There's three of them and their dad all playing together and. It just, it's a work of art. Um, Griffin is the DM and he is just the most brilliant storyteller and um, it's so hysterical. They're just like the funniest family. Um, and the first graphic novel was brilliant. I think it really captured the essence of the, of the podcast. So um, I'm very excited to get into the second um, volume and hopefully the third will come out soon. Then for my third category, I have Wiccan books. So I mentioned in one of my recent videos that Wicca is something that's kind of a new thing for me, but it's something that I've really been exploring a lot of. Uh, at this point, I have gotten I think pretty comfortable with the idea of calling myself Wiccan um, and I have been just reading a ton of books because that's what I do when I get into something new. Um, so I actually mentioned several of these in my last wrap-up video from 
April, I think. Uh, so uh, you can go back and look at that if you're curious to hear more. I'm not going to go through all the books that I got because I got a ton of them. Um, but if that's something that you guys are interested in, let me know and I can do a separate video about that. I'm just trying not to do too much um, of this in my other videos because I don't know how much of like Wiccan stuff you guys actually want to hear about. So um, feedback would be great. Uh, but um, here are just a few of the books that I got that might be of interest. Um, so this first book is not really um, Wiccan necessarily. It's called The Green Witch and as you can see I have um, I've made notes. Um, so this is almost more of a coffee table book. It's just got this really cute cover, but it does have some interesting ideas in it. And obviously I um, made note of some of them. Um, it's like I said, not necessarily Wiccan specific, but it is something that would be a nice supplemental read if you're into a sort of Wiccan pagan sort of lifestyle. Um, I would not recommend it as a introduction to Wicca because it does not address that. Um, it's just something that kind of uh, suits or complements uh, a Wiccan or Pagan ideology. Uh, and uh, be being Green Witch, and as you can see with all the plants, it has to do with um, gardening a lot and just the way to use um, herbs and to kind of connect with nature more and stuff. And um, that's something that I have been getting a little bit more into since I started my garden this summer. So that is why I picked it up and I actually really enjoyed it. Then in that aforementioned wrap-up video, I mentioned that I had read a book by Scott Cunningham. Um, he did a, a sort of introduction book. It was called Wicca for the Solitary Practitioner, and I really enjoyed that one. I think that is my number one recommended uh, intro to Wicca book for anyone out there who's looking. But because I enjoyed that book so much, I had to pick this one up when I saw it. It's called Living Wicca, A Further Guide for, Sol for the Solitary Practitioner. Um, so I'm really curious to see what more this has to add to that first book. Um, it's quite short, so it's a quick read. Um, I've actually started the first few pages, but um, then I kind of got pulled away into the historical fiction land. Um, but I'm really hoping to get back to this one soon, maybe even in the next week or so. So hopefully I can fill you all in on my thoughts in an upcoming um, wrap-up video. Then finally for Wicca, uh, there is a series out there called Llewellyn's Sabbath Essentials, and it is a series of books where each book covers one Wiccan holiday. Since I began this Wiccan journey, there have only been a couple holidays. Um, so Midsummer was the first one, and I decided to pick this book up just to see what it was all about. Um, and it's actually really cool because they have um, like history and lore behind each um, particular uh, holiday, as well as different like recipes and suggestions for a way to celebrate. And it's just kind of a cool little info book. Then the second holiday that passed is called Lunasa, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's also called Lummis, which is what I've been calling it. Uh, so similar concept on that book. And then the next holiday that will be coming up is called Mabon or Mabon. I should learn how to say the names of these holidays. Uh, but in any case, um, I got the book for that so I can read about it um, as it comes up. And my plan is just to keep buying these as the holidays come up as a little gift to myself for that holiday. Um, and so far it's been a great source of inspiration and it's definitely been educational. So I recommend these if you're looking for ideas there. And finally, my fourth category of books is miscellaneous, um, which is basically just two books that I picked up that don't fit into these categories. Uh, so the first one is a Kindle book, which is um, Orphans of Raspe by Lois McMaster Pujold. And this is the seventh, I believe. Yes, the seventh book in the Henrik and Desdemona series. Um, these are all novellas. They all run about like 100 and 30 pages, 150 pages, um, but they are just delightful. I love Lois McMaster Bejold. Um, these books are set within her um, World of the Five God series, which starts with The Curse of Chalion, um, and that is just a really great trilogy. These books, though, 
these are even better. Um, I love the character of Penric. I love um, Desdemona, who is actually a demon that has like possessed him, um, but they have this symbiotic relationship where they work together. Um, he gains powers through her being there, and then also she gets to live in a human host, um, and it's just worked into the religion of the world, and it's just a fabulous series. He's basically like a spy. And the awesome thing about this book is that um, I discovered it on a day that was just a really bad day. I was in a terrible mood. I was really grumpy. And then I happened to look on Twitter and I saw people posting about reading it and I didn't even know she was working on the next uh, Penrick book. So I just instantly went to, to Amazon and bought it and um, it made me very happy. So uh, that was lovely. Then the final book I have for this haul is An Unkindness of Ghosts by Rivers Solomon. Um, and this book at a point, I it was all over my Goodreads feed. It seemed like everyone was reading it or recommending it. Um, and so I ended up adding it to my TBR mostly because I was seeing so many of my friends picking it up. Um, I, looking a little bit closer, I've seen kind of mixed reviews amongst the people that I follow on Goodreads. Um, so I'll be interested to see what I think as I actually get into the book. Um, but uh, lo and behold, we found it for just a couple dollars at the Friends of the Library that's near where Jess and I work. And I was going to buy this and then I realized that I forgot my wallet. So Jess bought it technically and I'm very grateful to her. Um, but this book is a sci-fi novel. It follows the story of a woman of color who is in space on a ship that is ferrying the last of humankind off somewhere. But it sounds like the society on this ship is set up like old time southern US, like pre-Civil War. Um, so people of color are thought of as less than human um, and so the main character is struggling a lot with that. And um, it sounds, based on uh, the shelving on Goodreads, it looks like there's also a queer element to this book. I don't know if the main character is queer or if there are other characters involved, um, but that was one of the top uh, shelves that it was shelved on. And based on the back of the book blurb, it sounds like there's some sort of murder mystery that is also happening. So there are several elements to this that sound like it is a worthwhile read, an interesting read, and I'm intrigued. So hopefully I'll be able to work that one into a TBR soon. And there you have my book haul from the last four months. I would love to hear what do you think of all these books down in the comments. Let me know if you've read any of them, what you think of them. If so, what books have you picked up recently? Are there any that you're super excited about or that you think I should check out? Let me know all the things. And thank you all so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I hope you all are having a wonderful week so far and I will talk to you soon. Bye!